Martin Izzard keeping back the challenge from four times British champion and of course world champion back in 1992 Anthony Dean there goes the leader one of the back markers moving off the way out of the way that was Paul Gerrard as he lets Martin is up through and a big problem then for Martin he's done it in the same part of the course and now surely Anthony Dean's going to make the move riding for Fowler's motorcycles on the super jets now living in Stamford here comes fourth place man Jim Goodchild and Craig Muller next down in fifth place and really a good showing from this young man his first season in the expert class only started racing a year and a half ago number nine is Simon Hinchliffe and he will finish in one of the midfield positions so that's all action by the minute here then let's summarize the three two one from the solo skis but no surprises really Jim Goodchild finished eventually third in second place it was number eight Anthony D he'd be happy with that and so it was left to the number one of 94 to start off 95 with a win Jonathan Rolfe Jonathan, congratulations on that. That looked a really hard race for you. It was. The start, the first half of the race was nice. I was enjoying it, but the water got rougher and rougher and rougher, and uh, the back started getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So I was just praying for the chequered flag. Eventually it came, so I was like, please, when I saw that. I saw you keep looking behind you. Were you worried about the people behind you? Well, it's more of a case of um, if somebody starts gaining, you just push a bit harder just to keep an eye on where the second, third place riders are and who's in second and third, and just like run your own race from what's going on behind you if you need a bit of extra speed go a little bit faster but it wasn't all racing one or two had a few other tricks up their sleeve <laughs> time for our first look at the girls well, if you're expecting this to be rather less aggressive than the boys, forget it. You're in for a shock. No quarter given here either. But now it's time for the experts. And we're racing with the two girls at the front of this one. It's Cathy O'Neill and Lisa Barsby. Cathy O'Neill, of course, is the defending champion this year, but it's number two, Lisa Barsby, who moves into the lead for Silkaline Kawasaki. And then, Riga Yamaha's Cathy O'Neill. Belinda Green is tucked in in third place. Over the whoop de doo the bunny hop they go. Nice and smoothie from both ladies, and they're tied together nice and tightly on this opening lap. Not much of a distance between the two girls. Lisa Barsby, one of the top riders in the country, is actually ranked number three in the world. And second place, Cathy O'Neill, currently ranked number four. So both these ladies star players, and whoops, they've had a big collision, and that was a big crash for Cathy O'Neill and she's lost the ski and will lose a lot of time swimming for it. Well, we see Lisa Barsby back in the machine, but she's let someone go past, and that someone was novice British champion Lucy Dimbleby from the Swithland. So the winner of this race is Belinda Green. So let's find out what happened with that incident earlier in the race. The exhaust coupler blew, and as the exhaust gas is building up in the engine, um, it uh, obviously slowed the ski and suffocated it. And uh, I was trying my hardest to keep Kathy off because she was gaining. And uh, we just had a bit of a smash and that was like the end of my completely torn my exhaust coupler. And that was it really, I just had to finish the race. Lisa slowed up, I've gone to go round her and then she just came straight off and whacked into the side of the ski which made us both come off of the skis. Unfortunately, I lost my lanyard key which is how you stop and start. I couldn't start the machine until one of the safety crew came over and gave me my key to start it again. We stay with the ladies for their second race and Belinda Green is quickly out of the gate. Linda Green, of course, the winner of the previous race. But this time it looks like the whole shot has gone to Cathy O'Neill, and indeed it, it, it has. Number one, the defending British champion, this little stick of dynamite. She's oh so fast on the Superjet, riding for Riva Yamaha. 
being chased all the time by the rest of the girls, although she does appear to have broken away a little bit on this one, giving herself just a little bit of space to manoeuvre. There's the second place lady, number two, Lisa Barsby. And then in third place, well, that's a bit of a surprise. It's the novice British champion, and it was Lucy Dimbleby. And there in fourth place is Belinda Green on the number three Yamaha. And number four in the midfield is Anna Bathurst from the Docklands Water Sports Club. She lives in London, did extremely well in Europe in 1993, not seen so much of her this year. But there's been a leader change, and now it's number two, Lisa Barsby from Leicestershire, who goes through to take the win on the number two ski. Well, time to round up the ladies then. And in third place was number three, Belinda Green, as it was in the 94 campaign. Second was number two, Lisa Barsby. That one two was a repeat of 94. And number one for number one, Cathy O'Neill. Cathy, well done on that. After the last what, episode, it was excellent racing. You seem to be so far ahead. How did you do it? Um, I don't know, actually. I've, I think all the training in the winter has paid off. I've done a hell of a lot trying to keep trying to keep your stamina out there and not going too mad at the beginning. You've got to pace yourself, and it proved to be successful. <laughs> It's the expert men once again. And once again, it's Jonathan Rolfe. First to the whole shot, boy, surely. Craig Muller next, just tucked in behind him. You can see him, number 33, this young man, the current novice British champion. But it's Jonathan Rolfe who takes the whole shot around that big right-hand turn. And someone else has just slipped into view there. I couldn't quite see who it was. But there's been a change with second, third and fourth as they made that first turn. And it's Jonathan Rolfe then for his second time today. Well, we've seen him do this once before and it looks like we're going to see him do it again. And here comes some of the midfield players then just making their way through the pack and it looked to me like Anthony Dean was certainly in the top four or five then. Over the bunny hop, nice and clean. Jonathan Rolfe is very smooth over this and there he is. It's Jim Goodchild once again, as I told you before, injured yesterday but just riding like a demon on the number three ski giving chase to Jonathan Ralph. There he is, a little bit of help from Yamaha on the side of his ski and here comes Anthony Davis from Dursley and he's also on the circle in Kawasaki ski so that's two of their machines in first and third places as we see it. And here he comes, Anthony the Destructor Dean in fourth place. Well, we expected to see Anthony a little further up the field, but he's always there in contention. It's still Rolf from Goodchild, and there's Jim Goodchild. And we're looking to see where Tony Davis is, but we're checking out the leader once again. Well, Craig Muller next down in fifth place at the moment, and really does look as though he's struggling just to touch in this one. Only 15 or 16 years old, and uh, his first season in this sport and down with the midfield players at the moment, along with Simon Hinchliffe. So, second in the race. Well, is he second in the race? Because I think this is a leader change. Has Jim Goodchild gone to the pointed end of this one? I believe he has. We'll have to wait a second and see where Jonathan Rolfe is. And is that him? Yes, it is, number seven. So Jonathan Rolfe lost the lead then, just out of sight. And that means Tony Davis is going to put his teammate under pressure if he can. And Jim Goodchild takes up the lead. Anthony Dean still running a nice strong fourth place. A little bit of excitement then. Jim Goodchild, the new leader. What an excellent result for this young man from Hemel Hempstead. Ranked second in the world. So after 10 laps then, this was the eventual result. And Anthony Dean finally grabbing that third place he'd fought so hard for. Well, Jonathan Rolfe didn't get the double that he wanted. He finished second. And it was Jim Goodchild upsetting the Rolfe roller coaster. His persistence paying off. Well, basically, uh, Jonathan's got a very fast ski. And obviously, he pulled the whole shot, no problem. Um, but I stuck in there in second place and stayed at it and kept on the pace. I knew that generally the front two people would normally pull a good, of a, good bit of a lead. So I thought if I can stay with Jonathan, it'll put third place back a little bit. Um, unfortunately, he had a bit of a cutout on one of the bends. And I come out on the split option course there in front and 
I had a bit of a bad knock yesterday on my leg and I knew I couldn't do a real fast pace, but I had to just stay in front, basically. So, so you basically got in front because of the split course? Yeah, he, basically what happened, he, he went around a turn quite heavy, I think, and his ski stalled slightly, and that allowed me to beat him on the, you know, I was coming out of the split course pretty much quicker. And it's back to the big flagships of the sport as we take a look at the lineup. and they're off very quickly and this is Alan Picard again number 10 as he looks across at the rest of the riders right and left and just ahead of him once again on the stop ski is Jeff Clark an incredible run but around the outside goes the ever quickening Mike Ritchie he just is so fast since 1988 he's been riding solos this is his first year in the new runabout class I spoke to him earlier in the showers and he said it's absolutely fantastic these craft are so big and so quick into the clubhouse section and it's still an excellent result at the moment the man from Hartlepool newly sponsored by Southwester Jeff Clark and it's back to the leader then Mike Ritchie and just look at the way he handles the big Yamaha wave raider you can see the rest of the pack Jeff Clark Alan Pickard in third place all chasing hard and then there's a little battle towards the rear being led by the current British champion Kevin Hutchins, but he's not really in this one. It's all down to Mike Ritchie and Jeff Clark at the moment. They're running one and two and looking so strong. Now Alan Pickard has picked up his pace. Starting to look a little bit quicker and real in the leaders and a little bit close to that boy, but just about managed to get around the outside of it. Mike Ritchie then, number 21. One of the longest running competitors on the circuit takes a look to see where the rest of the pack are and here they come it's clark and picard and pretty soon they're going to be locked in battle i'm sure they're getting oh so tight these two men you could hardly squeeze a cigarette paper between them and that is the irish champion in the runabout class number four from carrick fergus once again on your screen and here comes vaughan the viper evans from the wirral again riding the wave raider these really do seem to be the biggest machines on the circuit. Big hulls looking very much like speedboats with handlebars nowadays. Mike Ritchie, unbeatable. Surely going to take it right the way back to the checkered flag. Jeff Clark, still struggling just a little bit. Of course, this machine desperately underpowered compared to the other machines out there. And Alan Pickard getting closer all the time. Well, Alan knows that Jeff Clark is on the stock and he'll keep the pressure up and something's wrong. He put his hand in the air right then and he's just stopped. Well, we believe that he splashed some petrol in his goggles when he was filling the machine up just before the start and that has now got in his eyes and caused him some serious burns. So he's out of this one and everybody moves up a place. So here comes the current and defending champion, Kevin Hutchins, once again. And John Mathers, number six on the Polaris, will also move up another place. So as we watch the race unfold, Picard now moves up into second place and you can just about see him through the spray. Number 10 on the side of his cabinet. Oh, and he makes a challenge for the lead and blows it totally, gets ripped off the machine. Mike Ritchie looks back to see if he's okay and sees Alan Picard desperately swimming. Not an easy job to do in a wetsuit and a life jacket with your full protective gear, so he's gonna lose a lot of time with that. And that means now that Kevin Hutchins will have moved up to second place and Mike Ritchie now well I was about to say no pressure at all but he misses a boy and as he retakes it here comes Kevin Hutchins number one and they're absolutely neck and neck as they go into the clubhouse again and a big crash Mike Ritchie turns turtle Kevin Hutchins just manages to stay on the ski and we see that crash again incredible stuff well Alan Pickett I can tell you was absolutely unharmed from that incident but just look what happened Unbelievable. So while the runabout riders check their bruises, we'll take a check on the scores. Picard having to recover well to record his third. Richie, after throwing it away, completed a double, but not quite what he wanted. It was two second places. And back on top, the man they all chased in 94, Kevin Hutchins. A knockabout race then with a knockout finish. Entertainment for everyone, they call it. Crowds and skiers alike. 
Not even the skiers themselves could quite believe it. What happened, I was having a bit of a tussle with Alan Pickard there and we had a bit of a crash up the back straight over there. Then um, I come around the tight section around here and I missed a turn and Kevin sort of, we got tangled together and Kevin just sort of got the better of me really. That was it. Kevin, can you tell us how you saw it from your point of view? Exactly that, I was watching what was going on and enjoying it in front uh, and uh, I couldn't believe it, he, he missed the boy and he's coming back round again so it was all or nothing, it was just go, go for it, we both knew that. Uh, I was on top of it and we both, we both went over, but I just managed to stay on. It was a good. Bit of bad luck then on Mike's part. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad he had a bit of bad luck for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.